Hi everybody, welcome back to Top Chair Sports. It's Thursday, so you know what that means. It's NFL Day, uh, although you may never know who you're going to get presenting to you on this day about the NFL. You will know that there will always be news coming out for football on Thursdays. With that, let's jump into it. We're going to go in and pretty much look at two main topics this week. Uh, the first of that being wide receivers and contract extensions, and the second of that being a sad but long, wonderful career and retirement for one of the stars of the league, to put it simply. Um, first off, with wide receivers, around the league right now there's a lot of buzz because Julio Jones and Michael Thomas are looking to have contract extensions in the near future. Um, Right now, Michael Thomas is still on his rookie contract, and the Saints believe that they're working out details to make him the highest paid wide receiver in the NFL. Julio Jones is paid towards the top, as he is already one of the top, and his contract, I believe, will, although he will be paid more, will pretty much be along similar lines as to that right now. So let's just quick look at receivers around the league, see what they've done, see how Michael Thomas and Julio Jones compared to those two. So, first off, Odell Beckham Jr. right now gets paid the most of any wide receiver at $18 million per year for five years. Uh, For the next five years, he is the highest paid wide receiver in the league on an average annual value basis. Antonio Brown is second, coming in at $16.8 million for the next three years of average annual value. Obviously, different teams split it up differently as far as cap hit, base salary, uh, etc. So this is just all of that combined, uh, the hit that the team will face. Amari Cooper, for this coming year, actually is making $13.5 million. Uh, he did not make this much nearly before, but incorporated in that trade, the, he, this is how much he's going to make. So he's the third most uh, for the next season, roughly. He's in the top five. My bad. Um, T.Y. Hilton makes an average of $11 million per year for five years. This is year four or five coming up uh, for the 2019 season. So we'll probably see something for him also next offseason and see how that plays out. Um, but he is another one of those top five as far as average annual hit uh, for their team. Julio Jones' current contract is just over $14 million per for five years, uh, he he's getting paid like the top, like we said before. Depending who you talk to, Julio Jones should be in the top five receivers of anybody's list in the league right now. Michael Thomas, on the other hand, on his rookie contract, is making just over five million dollars throughout the past four three years combined, and including this upcoming season. This. Although rookie contracts are low, um, Michael Thomas has clearly outshined uh, the competition and deserved the contract extension he's going to get from the Saints. I like that they're looking to make this move, but now to figure out exactly how much he's worth, let's base it off some of the other people in the league. In the past three years, so since 2016, uh, the 2016, 17, and 18 seasons, Michael Thomas has 3,787 yards. 321 receptions and 23 touchdowns. He is averaging basically eight touchdowns a year, over 108 receptions per year, 107 receptions per year, and just about 1,300 yards per season on average. His rank of receptions for each of those years, he ranked ninth in the league in 2016, third for receptions in 2017, and he led the league in receptions this past year. For receiving yards, he ranked ninth his first in rookie year, uh, sixth the second year, and third this past or er, sixth again, sorry, this past year for uh, receiving yards across the league. Julio Jones in the past three years has 4,530 receiving yards, 284 receptions, 17 touchdowns. We all know that Julio can struggle to get into the end zone time to time, and this, although it may appear to hurt the Falcons. Clearly, he makes up for it in other ways, as his receiving yards are just unmatched by anybody in the league over these past three years. Um, as with only 284 receptions, you also get to see that his average yards per catch is a lot higher than most other rec- receivers because nobody can come 
quite compare him in yards, uh, and he puts up an average number of receptions. For receptions, in the past three years, his league ranks were 17 in 2016, 9th in 2017, and 4th this past year for total receptions. For receiving yards, he's been number 2, number 2, and number 1, respectively, from 2016 on. So clearly, in the past three years, if there's anything you can rely on, it's that Julio Jones is going to be in the top three in receiving yards because he's that good and he just finds ways to get open and overpower the defensive backs. Putting these two, who are looking at their current contract extensions, in comparison to some others in the league, Odell Beckham Jr., who, as we said before, is the highest paid wide receiver right now, has just over 2,700 yards, 200 receptions, and still 19 touchdowns in the past three years. Now, although this is a lot lower, except for the touchdowns, uh, than Julio and Michael Thomas, this is because Odell Beckham only played four games in the 2017 season while missing a couple others here and there, as most players do uh, miss a few games. So, you can't necessarily criticize him too much just because his yards and receptions are down, but if he's still finding ways to score that many times, I guess that's why the Browns believe he's worth the money he's being paid. Antonio Brown is another one who, no matter who you talk to, is probably in the list of top three receivers across the league, if not number one uh, at this moment, when you're looking at on-the-field performance. Yes, there's a lot of drama that goes around with Antonio Brown. However, he's a spectacular football player, whether everything else bodes with that or against it. As far as locker room, would you want him there? It depends on the team. Oakland, and soon to be Las Vegas, believe that they want him, and rightfully so. For the past three years, Antonio Brown has is at 4,100 yards. Uh, he has 311 receptions, never having less than 100 in each of those past three, th three seasons, and he has 36 touchdowns in the past three years. Conclusions that we can draw from this is that the Saints are closing in on Michael Thomas, like they said, to make him the highest paid receiver in the league. Should this be? Probably. I mean, why not? Because here's the thing. Michael Thomas is going into his fourth year, and he's putting up numbers as if he is a top five receiver in the league, no matter what, each year in and out. Also, he is a lot younger than everybody else who is getting paid this much, so you know he's going to, or you expect him to put up this kind of production, or maybe even more, and set records uh, in the next few years. So I really like the move here by the Saints to make sure that they sign him. They still have Drew Brees for a solid window of a few years, and this way you'll get the most out of Michael Thomas while having Drew Brees there. And then if and when Drew Brees retires and leaves, uh, and it's looking like Teddy Bridgewater takes over, then you still have a proven wide receiver that will be able to be such a reliable target and carry your Saints offense uh, each year in and out. As far as Julio Jones, I definitely think he probably deserves a slight contract upgrade in his annual value because of the way that Odell Beckham, Antonio Brown, and most likely Michael Thomas are going to be paid. He's making just over $14 million a year right now. Uh, I expect that his number to be somewhere around anywhere from Antonio Brown's salary to that of Odell Beckham. Um, I'm surprised. I don't think that Odell Beckham deserves right now to be paid more than Antonio Brown, but that's the way it works out when teams want people. The only thing that I could see restricting Julio is his lack of, in most people's eyes, touchdowns that he's able to earn in and out every year. Um, I know that he's still put up 17, but when you break it down and you're only getting 5 to 6 per year from your star receiver, it's really not that great. That's only one every two to three games. The other thing restricting Julio Jones that will not restrict Michael Thomas in his contract extension is that of his age. He's currently 30 years old. Uh, I know Antonio Brown is also the same age, and that's why I have them about at the same numbers as they each bring different aspects to their team but are both in the top three receivers in the league right now. Other news in the league 
uh, is the end of an era, as Josh McCown this past week has has announced his NFL retirement. After 16 NFL seasons, Josh McCown is throwing in the towel. Um, obviously, a quarterback for a lot of teams in that time, but still took snaps, uh, even at slot receiver here and there, and would be have no shyness taking off down the field and going for runs when even playing QB. He played for eight total teams in those 16 NFL seasons, uh, which is a quarter of the league, let's not forget about that, and played in six of the eight divisions, everything except the AFC South and the NFC East. Teams that he played for of those eight were Cardinals, Lions, Raiders, Panthers, Bears, Buccaneers, Browns, and finally ending with the Jets. He played 99 games throughout his career, starting 76 of them. Uh, a little sad and disappointed that he didn't hit the big 100, um, but that's his choice. And he ended with 98 passing touchdowns, along with 13 rushing. Things that we can draw from this. Basically, any game that Josh McCown plays in, you can rely on him for one passing touchdown. And you can pretty much rely on him for one rushing touchdown a season, give or take. I said it was the end of an era. Josh McCown is by no means one of the best QBs to ever play in the NFL. Uh, he's a decent backup, I would say. Uh, and he's a guy that can come in and do his part, and he'll never really outshine it. But anyways, he made it fun to watch on the field, especially when you knew he was playing against your team that week. And I wish you best of luck in retirement, Josh McCown. With that, thank you for tuning in to Top Chair Sports for the NFL this week. Uh, tune in next week on Thursday to see the latest news and drama around the league as well as any more contract extensions if we have any more details about them. Make sure to comment, like, and smash that subscribe button. Uh, and tune in Monday for to see Brett and Spencer and the rest of the week with all our other sports. Thank you.